In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the capabilities of the Alpha Vantage API. And this is sort of a follow on to my first video where I talked about extracting the high and low prices for a day using Alpha Vantage. Okay, and as I mentioned, it is one of a number of APIs you can use to download real time data. And you're somewhat limited as to what you can do using the free API key. All right, but that's what I'm going to go ahead and use here. All right, but even at the free version, it's still a pretty powerful API. All right, so I'm going to start by taking a quick look at the documentation page. And the documentation page is geared towards making traditional API calls. All right, and so I am going to show that later on in the video, but I'm going to mostly be using the helper library Alpha Vantage that you can install for Python. All right, but just to give you an idea of uh, the major calls you can make, uh, we have our time series data. All right, we have fundamental data. All right, if you're interested in trading currencies, there's Forex, there's cryptocurrencies. Uh, there are technical indicators. All right, so many, many technical indicators here. And then there's one that's not listed here uh, that's called sector performance. All right, so that's the one I'm going to start by demonstrating. All right, so to get it, I'm going to import it. Okay, so once I get it imported, I'm just going to make a object based on it. And I'm going to pass in my API key and I'm going to ask for the output to be in pandas. Once you set up the object, you can go ahead and make the call and all the Alpha Vantage API calls, when you make them through the helper library, have two components. They have a data component and a metadata. So we have to unpack those things and then it's just a simple get sector call. All right, and if we want, we can take a look at the metadata object just to see what's in there. All right, so not a lot in there. Just tells us the market it's getting it from and uh, when the last data was available. All right, so this is actually real time. All right, and then if we want to see what's in the data packet, we can call that. All right, so you actually get quite a bit here. All right, so the first column is our real time and uh, we see each of the sectors and then how they're performing. And then uh, we can go back and see how they're doing for the day. All right, how they're doing for the month. All right, and then uh, how they've done year to date and the last year. All right, and so just a lot of good data that would be pretty hard to amass unless you had this simple API call to do it for you. All right, so the next thing we might wanna do is probably plot what that thing looks like. And so uh, I'm going to, from this data column, I'm going to plot that first column. So it's a little bit of a clunky name here. All right, but we can use our IntelliSense to fill it in for us. All right, and then I will just use the helper function in pandas to plot that thing as a bar plot. All right, and then we'll just, we'll make a, uh, a few adjustments here. All right, so we might give it a title. All right, we might change the layout a little bit. Give us a more compact plot. All right, and maybe you wanna see the grid lines. All right, so let's take a look at that. All right, so there they are. There are our sectors, and uh, we can see that uh, as of right now, the time this video was made anyway, all right, um, about half of them are up and half of them are down. And uh, the best is this consumer discretionary, which looks to be up about a percent and a half. Okay, so in addition to our sector performances, we're going to take a look at another of the modules that comes with the helper library. All right, and uh, that's going to be the technical analysis module. And so I'm going to import it. Okay, and these things are calculated in isolation. So if you want to combine them with the actual trading data, uh, you're going to need to also import the time series. Okay, so once you get them imported, you make a call just like for any other module here. So I'll just call it technical analysis and we'll make a tech indicators object and I'll pass in my API key and then I'll set my output format. 
So with our libraries imported, we can go ahead and create the technical analysis object. And then we can go ahead and get some data. And uh, I'll get it for Google. And as we saw, there are many technical indicators, but I'll just get the simple moving average. And like I said, I'll get it for Google. And then there are a few other arguments we have to specify here. We have to tell it the interval we want, and uh, I'll get daily. We have to tell it what time period, and uh, I'll get a 200 day. All right, and then since we have open, low, high, and close, we have to tell it what series we want. And I'll get the closing price. Okay, and uh, let's just see what the first few rows of that look like. All right, so we can see we go back about five years, or I guess it's six years we go back. And then uh, let's take a look at uh, how that plots. Okay, so we can see that uh, Google has been on a steady upward trend uh, for these past six years. All right, and then uh, to compare it or plot it against the closing price data, we're gonna have to make a call out to time series. All right, and then I'll just call this prices. All right, and I can call get daily. We'll get as much data as we can from this call. Okay, I'm going to uh, rename the columns. And while I'm at it, I'm going to sort this because we get this in reverse chronological order. And uh, then we'll take a look at the first few rows. Okay, so we go back a bit farther on the daily price data than we do on the technical indicator data. All right, so we'll just have to align those things to, to make a reasonable plot. And so I need to go back to the 9th of January 2015. So, okay, we'll get everything from there on. And then uh, we should be ready to plot it. Okay, so there is our closing price versus our 200 day moving average. And then, you know, there's a number of other things you could do past that. You could calculate the ratio of the price to the closing data and maybe try to guess whether or how far above uh, the 200 day moving average Google is to see if the price is somehow extended uh, beyond what is sustainable or what you think is sustainable. So that's a couple of ways you can use the helper library to make calls to the API. One thing that is missing from the helper library is the fundamentals module. All right, so I'm not sure why that's not there, but if you want to get fundamentals and they're pretty powerful, uh, then you're going to have to make a direct call to the API. All right, okay, and this is pretty straightforward to, to do it. We're just going to use the requests library, and uh, I'm going to also get uh, JSON. All right, now when you make a call to the to their API directly, you get JSON, but sometimes it's just easier to work with a string. Okay, and so uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to convert it into a, a string. All right, and then uh, I'm just going to go out to the website and, and make a call. Okay, so I'll just scroll down to the fundamental data. Uh, it talks about how to use it. All right, so we're going to need a, a, a function, a symbol, and an API key. All right, and I'm going to copy this generic call to IBM if I can. Okay, so when, yeah, when you click on the, the example call, it actually makes the call for you. All right, so I'm going to bring it back here, and uh, I'm going to store it. Okay, it needs to be a string. Okay, and then I'm going to replace these generic components here with something more useful. So I'm going to say store a variable symbol and uh, we'll just keep working with Google, I guess. And then uh, I'm going to, for now, just leave the rest of it as is. And then I'm going to call this a call and we're going to use requests and then get. All right, and I'm going to use a formatted string here and I'm going to replace that symbol in here with my symbol. Okay, and I'm also going to replace the demo API key, all right, which won't give us real data or real time data at least, with my API key. Okay, and to get it as a string, I'm going to I'm going to tack text on the end. 
Okay, so we make the call, and then uh, I'm going to transform it. So call, I'm going to use my JSON loads. All right, because even though it's a string, it's still formatted as JSON. Okay, and then from there, I'm going to turn it into a data frame because it's just going to be easier uh, to take a look at. All right, and uh, we're actually going to get a dictionary when we convert that JSON loads. So I'll get my data frame from dictionary. All right, let's see what that does for us. Okay, so here's all the fundamental data for Google that it came up with. All right, or that comes with the API. Okay, and then if you just want to get any one of these keys to use it for something else, right, you can just call it. All right, so there are other calls you can make. All right, so you can get balance sheet, income statement, statement of cash flows, all right, and earnings. All right, so those are the functions down here. And so I'm going to not use Tesla. I'm going to stay with Google, I guess. And uh, I'm going to get earnings. All right, and then, right, I replaced that function from the overview. All right, it's going to be earnings. All right, so it may be a little bit easier to work with this if you have these variables and format it as a string. All right, we're going to get the call and uh, again, return it as text. Okay, we're going to use the same process. We're going to transform it into a JSON loads object. All right, and just to give you an idea of what that looks like, we will run it. Okay, so here's our dictionary, and it's pretty hard to read here, all right? But what we have are earnings broken out by a different measure. So here we have annual earnings, quarterly earnings, okay? And uh, it looks like we have quite a bit more data with quarterly earnings. So uh, let's go ahead and turn that into a data frame. All right, and uh, I won't store it as a variable, but probably you would want to. All right, I'll just make a direct call on it. All right, and it's quarterly earnings. Okay, so we go from something that's not so readable, all right, to something that is very readable. And uh, we can see that you go back again about mm, seven years or so for quarterly earnings data here. All right, and beyond earnings, right, we get other measurements. Okay, so I hope that helps you get started with the Alpha Vantage API.